I'm Travis Bader, and this is the Silver Core Podcast. Join me as I discuss matters related to hunting, fishing, and outdoor pursuits with the people and businesses that comprise the community. If you're new to Silver Core, be sure to check out our website, www.silvercore.ca, where you can learn more about courses, services, and products that we offer, as well as how you can join the Silver Core Club, which includes 10 million in North America wide liability insurance to ensure you are properly covered during your outdoor adventures. Silvercore podcast listener Brock Fisher writes in and asks, any thoughts on the podcast outlining the local fishing scene, river, crabbing, lake fishing, that kind of thing? There's such a large amount of people who are interested in fishing who live in the South Coast Fraser Valley and just don't know where to start. So that's what I want to delve into today. Tonight I'm joined by Catherine Laflamme, who's dabbled in in guiding, works at Michael and Young Fly Shop in Vancouver, and we met through our mutual friend, April Vokey of Anchored Outdoors. Welcome, Kat. Hi. Jillian Steele, who guides part-time, works at High Water Tackle in North Vancouver, and along with Kat, is a founder of the BC Women's Fly Fishing Group. Jillian, I met you through my wife, Tiffany Bader, who can't stop raving about the good work both you and Kat are doing with the group. Welcome, Jill. Thank you. Finally, to provide the new angler's perspective, I have pro chef and resident Silver Course staffer, my wife, Tiffany Bader. Welcome, Tiff. Hey. So, Kat and Jill, when we were talking before, looking at different ideas of what we can bring to the listeners, uh, there's a number of ideas that were floating around. And I think the top three that came out was a fishing calendar, basically talking about what to fish, where to fish, when to fish, uh, advice for new anglers. And of course, talk about the BC Women's Fly Fishing Group. But before we get too deep into that, I kind of want to learn a little bit more about you two. Uh, okay. So I grew up in a family, uh, my parents both really love going camping. So every weekend growing up, we would go camping and fishing. My, my dad's a fly fisher. He loves fishing lakes. So anyway, we were brought up fishing. Uh, my siblings hated it. I loved it. At 12 years old, I begged him to teach me how to fly fish because I hated worms. Absolutely right. hated worms. Um, and there was something very poetic about watching my dad fly cast. And one thing that really got me was that he, he would, he would <laughs> cast to these rising trout and basically count down. So he'd cast out to a, to a dimple in the water where a fish just rose and he'd count it down. He'd be like, ready? Three two, one. And then no. somehow he just no. got it so many times. And I was like, I want to do that. This sounds amazing. It looks amazing. It's so magical. Anyway, it's <laughs> magical. So anyway, I begged him, begged him, begged him. And he finally, we went to Walmart. He bought me a $50 fly set up and that was, that was it. You know, there was a lot of skipping school in grade 12 and just drive straight to the veteran fish. And then I met April Vokey uh, out of um, I went to Capilano University for a couple of years and did a um, outdoor recreation management program. And out, out of that, I ended up getting a job with April. So I worked for her for Fly Gal Ventures for a couple of years, actually no, three years. Very cool. Yeah. Well, April, she wasn't at Cap, was she? No, no. I just, I met her at the Trade X when I was 16 uh, and we yeah. kept in touch. And then uh, with that program, I had to do a... Um, practicum in the summer mm. so I asked her I'm like hey you need any help she's like yes and then she hired me right on the spot in February before summer so and then I just stuck around helped her with some office stuff uh fly tying all kinds of stuff shipping out packages blah 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 so did that for a few years well sorry hold on backtrack out of high school I got a job at the fly shop in Surrey Michael and Young fly shop okay so I was there part-time on top of working for April did a whole bunch of fish bumming <laughs> for fish bumming. years. <laughs> fish um, bum, I like that term. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, bandit camping and over yeah, the river there. Just exactly. To, yeah. Living in a trailer by the river. Perfect. Um, and then came back, needed money. So I got a, a full-time position at Michael and Young and I've been there ever since. Wow. Yeah. I only have one question for you. Yeah. So you said your dad, being French Canadian, did he count three, two, one? Or did oh. he count... Three, two, one. <laughs> Fish on! <laughs> Only because I know your dad and I love him and he's so hey, funny. I was like, he does hey, not just cat, say three, two, hey, one. Cat. Ready? Three, 
What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> I love it. Love him, but yeah, I knew I knew that. I was like, yeah. he did not. <laughs> Three, two, one. Absolutely, that's not how it went. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Jill. Uh my intro. My uh, my dad has owned uh, High Water Tackle North Vancouver for I guess now we are twenty. 36 years coming up into April. So wow. quite a long time. And he's owned that shop for uh, pretty much its entirety with the exception of six months. He bought it off uh, another guy there quickly thereafter who was not very well received in the retail business. One um, of those types, I hear, yeah? Yeah. So he purchased it off. Uh, then he essentially came home to my mom and said, hey, I bought a tackle shop. And my mom wasn't exactly that excited about it. But, no, uh, she didn't know. <laughs> she knew what she was getting into a little bit. They met at a, a, a guiding lodge up at uh, Stewart Island back okay. in the day. So uh, Snore Island Resort. So they, she knew what she was getting into at that point. Got it. Fair um, enough. Anyway, so it's a bit of a romantic love story with them. And then I came around and I was just kind of pushed into it, not pushed into it. I shouldn't say that. I was just kind of, uh, indulged in it my entire life. So it came very naturally for me and, uh, a little bit of a contrast. I have a sister who, you know, never really got into it. We were always camping and everything, whenever we went out in the outdoors, it always revolved around fishing in some way. So, uh, you know, my dad wasn't going to camp somewhere that didn't have a water body attached to it. That just wasn't going to happen. I can get behind that. Yeah. So fishing was always a part of it and, uh, it just kind of grew naturally. And then when I was about 15, I started working at the shop and then, you know, going to university, it became a very, uh, convenient working space for me as well. And then ever since then, I've just kind of grown and adapted through there. And I've got myself involved in a couple things since then, uh, various, you know, uh, non-governmental organizations, NGOs, and some other things as well. And okay. then dabbled a little bit in that uh, guiding side of it too. It's like uh, consulting for the NGOs or volunteering? Um, yeah, I work uh, for the Steelhead Society as a director. Not work, I volunteer for the Steelhead Society as a director. So that's been a big passion of mine for a couple can years. can be viewed as work, but yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> it can definitely be work sometimes for sure, but uh, It's a labor yeah. of love. Yeah, yeah, it is. So, you know, just kind of got involved and then just fish when I can and, you know, meet lots of great people. And the industry certainly helps that a lot. So. Well, one of the things that Tiffany, you're going on about was the, the calendar, the fishing mm. calendar. And I really wanted to sit in on that episode, but <laughs> you know, it is the BC women's fly fishing group. <laughs> so, uh, I guess I get to hack it a little bit by having you guys <laughs> yeah, here on the bit. podcast and, uh, and learn about, uh, this fishing calendar. Can you tell me more about that? The calendar, or do you want to know more about the group from the get-go? Well, I don't know. Um, what do you want to talk about first? Uh, we can talk about the calendar. I think that- Yeah, I mean, the calendar was sort of um, something Jill sort of did amidst COVID. We tried to do a bunch of like Zoom meetings to keep the group active. Right. Um, while not being able to interact in person so much. So Jill's been really- great about doing all these Zoom meetings and Zoom courses for the group. And uh, one of the things she did over the holidays was kind of explain all the the fishery, fishing opportunities in the lower mainland f- throughout the year. Well, you guys must get that question all the time. Yeah, I think one of the things that is, I mean, maybe an advantage for us and maybe an advantage for our group overall is that, uh, you know, we're both of us working in shops and having worked in shops for a long time, relative to other people, Uh, (laughs) um, you, you start to learn the questions that get asked and you start to learn what the perspective is of a new angler walking into the store. Ah. So one of the questions that you get all the time, especially this time of year, because it's January and if you're not like hardcore steelheading, what, what do you do? You know, or if there's, you know, maybe you're not in the lower mainland, we don't have ice, so you're not necessarily ice fishing. We're right. lucky not to have Yeah, ice. maybe we're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> we have lots of flowing water, not hard water. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, we get asked a lot about what to do and what are some other alternatives. So I thought that was maybe a good thing. And then the other thing is you don't want to miss out on something. So you don't want to get halfway through a season and then not be prepared. Right. So just kind of preparing a 
calendar of kind of what are your target species, what you should be thinking about based on the time of year. And this is based in the lower mainland too. Sure. So of course it's not going to necessarily transcend to all aspects of the province, but at least, you know, kind of gives it a good, you know, rounded idea of yeah. what you should think about and then what you should kind of plan for as well. Because that definitely, I would say yeah. in the shop is... Upcoming fisheries. You know, people walk in and they say like, you know, what can I do now? Yeah. Salmon That's when season's over. I I love to fish. Mm-hmm. What do I do now? Yeah, we you get know? that all the time in the shop at least. So setting that kind of up and making people think also alternative fisheries, you know, although it's not like, you know, you're not chasing coho and chinook in the rivers right now in, you know, January when we're recording this, but there's tons of other things that you can do. Sure. Yeah. Whitefish. <laughs> Jill's favorite. <Yeah>. Whitefish. <laughs> the mountain whitefish. But it's true. There's there's lots of other, I mean, you can go steelhead fishing. You can still, there's lots of like, for right now, January, if we start at the beginning of there's resident trout you can go for. Bull um, trout. Bull trout. There's starting to whitefish. be. Whitefish. <laughs> whitefish. <laughs> Cutthroat. I really like whitefish. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> cutthroat trout, North you know, American t- bonefish. depending on where you are. So we kind of just got into that because that was just something that we get asked all the time. And I didn't realize kind of necessarily how uh, pop, like how you don't think about it, like how big of a question that is until you start making a PowerPoint presentation on it. <laughs> well, I heard it was pretty voluminous. I heard you had a lot of information. Oh my in gosh. It. I wrote a lot of notes. Yeah. I, I <laughs> signed in oh, yeah. a little late on that one and I was like, wow, this started at seven. It's now almost 11. <laughs> Dimitri hates me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's my problem. I have to tone it back like, on the wow. info. It's very detailed. I liked it. A little, maybe too detailed. <laughs> But yeah, but anyways, so we kind of went through that. So I think we could, you know, for our, for the listeners here, we could probably go through our kind of our rundown yeah. of uh, what, and it's a good time. It's January, so we can do our calendar year kind Maybe of Maybe not as detailed. This no, time. we're not. Don't worry. We will not go on for three <laughs> so hours. Seven o'clock now. Oh, so yeah. we got, uh, okay. Of, 11.30. Of this. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. We can just kind of jump into it. We can start basically with with now, January. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. Beginning of the year. What do we do? What do we fish? January. There's what do we do? Winter steelhead in certain rivers. Not all rivers in the lower mainland will have winter steelhead, but you know the main ones that have the earlier run of, of steelhead would be the Vetter, okay. and it's fishing great right now. Uh, the Chehalis is another one that gets early runs of steelhead. Um, you can start thinking about the Capilano if Capilano. you're on the North Shore. When you um, say fishing great on the Vetter. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's fish around. Okay. There's also a lot of anglers around. <laughs> Man, is there ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things that's always kind of um, scared me away from the Vetter River. Yeah. Now, I've rafted down that thing numerous times. Sweet. <laughs> but uh, I've never fished it because I just look and they're cheek by jowl going down there. Yeah. Is there it's, a mini it's steelhead fancy. going through? It's got the biggest number of steelhead in the lower mainland, that's for sure. And okay. that's why it's the busiest. And you're also allowed to keep a fish, a hatchery fish. So okay. find anywhere you're allowed to, to retain a fish, there's usually more people. Right. So for yeah. newbies, how do you distinguish a hatchery fish from a wild fish? A wild one? Um, so hatchery fish will have a clipped adipose fin, so that little nub of flesh above in front of the tail. So it's a little fin that's essentially useless and they clip them when they're young. So it'll be, you'll see there's a, uh, there should be a scar there where it's kind of healed over and a wild one will have that adipose intact. Okay. Cool. One thing I'll say about the vetter, just because the vetter (laughs) gets a lot of hate. Sure. And the vetter gets a lot of hate because it's busy. Yeah. Uh, from the steelhead anglers that I know and a lot of the steelhead anglers uh, that are very uh, prominent or very, you know, well-rounded steelhead anglers, being a good steelheader is, is not necessarily about how many fish you catch, but it's being able to adapt. The Vetter is probably hands down one of the best rivers if you want to learn how to steelhead fish and you want to learn how to steelhead mm. fish well. And it gets a lot of hate because it is busy. But as soon as you have a, a catch and keep fishery, that's what's going to happen. However, in terms of the uh, water that's available there, the diversity of the runs and the water type there, and from a learning perspective, it is hands down one of the best systems out there. So hmm. it gets a lot of hate yeah. all the time, 
all the time. People are like, oh, I don't want it to become the vetter or I hate the right, vetter. Right, right. We need to throw that out because I don't think that's fair. It is busy because it's also a high access area. You can fish a lot of water, easy easy. access. It's available for a lot of different kinds of people. You know, maybe you're not mobile. There's lots of places that you can go. So Hmm. we need to kind of, I think, dispense that idea that, you know, the vetter is bad because it's busy. Let's think about the vetter as being good because it has so many opportunities. There's also big fish in the vetter. You know, there's 20 pound fish that come out of there every year. Wow. Why? I was just there with my boyfriend today and he caught a 15 pound wild buck. It was amazing. And there's not a lot of places where you can, you know, live in Canada or North America for that matter, where you can drive 45 minutes and catch a 15 pound wild buck. You know what I mean? And we're pretty lucky and yeah, the vetter is super busy, but so it's I wonder also if we're going to see more people on the vetter based this, off of what I'm you're sorry, just saying right Dimitri, now. I ruined your cover. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, Maybe, but I think on the other hand, people know where they're going when they sure. or what what they're getting yeah. into when they go out there. But I just I kind of want to dispense that because a lot of people put a lot of hate on that river. It's and true. from a fishing perspective, it is probably one of the nicest rivers to fish. It's diverse. There's lots of water. So it's true from the top to the yeah. middle to and the lower. Beautiful. It's all it very is beautiful. Different. And I yeah, sure. yeah, it just gets hated on. And I yeah. I I just want to dispense that because yeah. you know you think winter steel honey, everybody's like ah. Oh. Right. But you Go do. Go the better you will learn. You don't, but you do. Ah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, lots of winter steelhead yeah. opportunities in January, the January, February. And that, that fishery will go till the river blows out in May, pretty much. Well, the vetter closes in May above, t- uh, above not this the year. crossing. Oh, not there is proposals year? to change right. that. So hmm. TBI, is that changing this? Is this top Spring? secret? It might be. No, oh, no, no. It's not top secret. No, no, no. no. There's proposals. Yeah. Yeah. So typically May, but there is, I don't know top. if that would go in this year. I don't know. Actually. TBI. Too late. Okay. Anyway, usually it closes above the Vetter Crossing May 1st and the lower uh, below the Vetter Crossing stays open in May, but usually might get like a week and then it blows out. Okay. Well, we'll look it up and put it in the podcast notes if we can find it. If it yeah. <laughs> if it changes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then you get into kind of as well this time of year, and I would say pretty much through till March. I mean, there's lots of, you know, resident trout fisheries. So all those, any system that got salmon in the previous fall, those are all going to have resident trout. So, you know, your bull trout, your cutthroat, your rainbows, they're moving into those systems, looking to key in on egg patterns, on flesh patterns, on all those kinds of things. So you see lots of guys fishing um, fly patterns like big flesh flies and stuff like that. that. That goes right till March pretty much. Okay. March, um, the salmon fry will actually start hatching when the weather warms up in, in March, typically, or sometimes early, late February. Okay. And then the trout, you know, resident trout fishing gets phenomenal because they'll gorge on those salmon fry. So bull trout fishing's great. Cutthroat fishing's great. Rainbows. Yeah. Yeah. So all through till the rivers blow out. With, that'd be up with Squamish as well and up through... Absolutely, yeah. Squamish systems, uh, anywhere that connects to the Fraser in the valley there. Harrison, okay. yeah. Nickerman, Dudney, all that stuff. Stave. Okay. Yeah. yeah Lots so of opportunities. Lots of opportunities. And so, then. <laughs> so I see people sometimes fishing, you know, as you drive down towards the border, down Highway 99. Mm-hmm. And uh, right by the... Um, yeah, there's the uh, Nickel Mickel, Serpentine, right. Little Campbell, all those ditches. I right. used, I grew up, um, when I was in my teens, that's where I used to go because I grew up in North Delta. Mm-hmm. So I used to go fish cutthroat in those ditches all the time. And it was great. Uh, I mean, mind you, they're not big, but it's okay. super fun after school, you know, on an afternoon. Anything that connects to the Fraser or the ocean will have um, little runs of, of sea run cutthroat. And that's what they're going for is cutthroat. Yep, cutthroat. Okay. Or, um, well, some of those rivers will have coho in the fall and chinook in the summer. Um, and some of them will also have steelhead. There's hatcheries on the Little Campbell and I think the Nicomechel as well. That's pretty easy access. Super easy access. Do they get pretty yeah. crowded as well? No. Mm. Dirty ditch water. People Dirty don't find water. very attractive. But they have fish. <laughs> There's fish in them. Yeah, absolutely. Ah, yeah. Okay. It's not exactly the most picturesque fly fishing experience in the woods. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> fishing amongst <laughs> farm fields and whatnot, but it's something to do and it's close. So I remember one time going, I think it was the serpentine and I thought yeah. I, I'm going to raft down the serpentine. Nice. I was getting really into rafting at one point and I thought, well, 
we'll just take this raft, we'll put it in, I'll get, catch it as the tide's going out. And I basically put it in a ditch, me and this other fellow, and I spent hours kicking and paddling and kicking and paddling <laughs> with a case of beer in my lap, thinking, oh my thinking I could have some nice, lazy little, little drift down. Meandering. It never happened. No, no. <laughs> But Sounds yes, like a lot of work. It was a lot of work. Yeah. And yes, it's not the most scenic place to be <laughs> in, but, uh, but did see some anglers. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So yeah. So you get those kind of fry popping out in that kind of Mar late February, March, April. And that's a big, that's a big food source for a lot of those resident fish. So anywhere that had salmon, you think about it, we got chum, chum fry coming out. We'll have pink fry next year, I guess. Any of those systems, that's when the fry start to move out and all the resident trout really key in on that. So that can be a fishery as well. You know, March, you know, you have a little bit longer days, but maybe you're not into steelheading. You know, it's not quite lake season. What do you right. do? Uh, so, you know, there's all that's available. Cutthroat, some guys will go fish off beaches in the lower mainland in the salt water if you want to do that. But, you know, yeah. if it's a, you know, rainy day, sometimes that's not ideal either. <laughs> true, true. You know, yeah. it can be a little bit harder as well. That can be a little bit nitpicky, but there's lots of options too. And then you get into the springtime and then you have BC's 20,000 lakes that's available to us. <laughs> and <Yes. laughs> Fish a different lake every day for the rest of your life. Pretty much. <laughs> so, you know, that's your, what, late? Yeah, depending on the year and the temperatures we get. Yeah. But based on how this year is going, it could be a really early lake season. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mid, yeah. mid to late April. Yeah. Mid to till. late April, there's usually the lower elevation lakes that are icing off. Um, and then May and June will be your prime, your prime still water months. Okay. Um, and there's so many other things going on at that time too. You can go bass fishing, which is also a very new thing in the lower mainland. Where, where do you go bass fishing? Oh my gosh, anywhere. Really? Yeah. There's any pond. Oh, I'm going to ruin it. Is, is this an invasive Ooh. species or what? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, I it's guess. It's a fairly new fishery, but basically any pond or slough in Abbotsford, Pitt Meadows, Langley. I heard there's a. Yeah. In the. Area. It's a secret. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny? Oh, you know what's funny? Cut that one out. Yeah, we'll just cut that one out. <laughs> I noticed you didn't mention that during the uh, presentation. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> but but what's funny is, is the person who actually asked this question, I'm going to call him out right now because he gave us some heat for doing a crabbing episode with Meat Eater with April Vokey. Oh, that's right. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, Rock, all, don't think I, don't think I forgot that it. one. Well, you're, yeah. you're giving them crabbing, secret crabbing spots. And no, we ocean? didn't even say the location. We were just out crabbing. And I guess he was able to determine what beach we were at. Oh my God. And he's, 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 he's a local. <laughs> okay. But in his defense, it was his <laughs> idea. And actually there's a few people who put it up, but I just thought he'd get uh, a kick out of hearing his yeah, name mentioned on here. <laughs> it, it was his idea to, uh, to, to share this information. But you guys let me know if we've got to beep things out as we go through here. Yeah, maybe specific spots. We, we won't, won't say. Really we're do. not going to talk about but, specific I mean, Spots. There are like right in Van Burnaby, Deer Lake has huge bass. Mm. Yes. Burnaby Lake has huge bass and super easy access right in town. You don't have to go very far, but there's there's bass. And that's, yeah, those ones you're okay to say. Would yeah, you, and very. Would you eat them? Nah. I've heard you people can. say you not, can. Not but from Deer Lake. I think no. There's a serious <laughs> you can in there. <laughs> you can, but I wouldn't. Okay. okay. <laughs> I mean. Depending on where you get it from. If it was like a nice, clear lake, maybe. Apparently they're delicious, mm. but not okay. Deer Lake. I've eaten not straight meat in Mexico, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, so yeah. But they are an invasive, and I think that is yeah. something that people, it is becoming more uh, prevalent in the lower mainland, probably at the cost of a lot of other species, especially mm. as they, you know, those systems that they're into now that... Um, uh, yeah. connect to the Fraser in uh, the last okay. maybe two years there's been some systems that do serious connect to the Fraser explosion. that are serious yeah. problems mm -hmm. for um, you know resident steelhead um, salmon yeah. in some instances mm -hmm. so it is a problem but it, it we have to be realistic that it is a fishery that is here now and it's very popular it's so much fun and yeah. it's, it okay. is fun <laughs> <laughs> would you would you fly fish for them or what, um, what do you use for you them? can yeah. the only issue with that is it's hard to fly People are going to hate me for this, but it mm. is hard to fly fish in the spots that you get good bass fishing okay. mm. in the lily pads 
uh, you know, under brush and that sort of stuff in the weeds. It's definitely better with gear. Um, that being said, I have fly fished for them a bunch in like pit meadows. Yeah. You just take the dogs for a walk and bring your fly rod with a little bass popper. You get yeah. tons of the smaller ones mm-hmm. and a bunch of little pu- pum- uh, pumpkin seed and panfish and that sort of stuff. It's super fun. Mm-hmm. But if you want like bigger bass, I definitely switch to gear. <laughs> Actually, the uh, episode of Das, das Boat. I remember that. Das Boat. Oh, yeah, I know. Right. Right. She's Some getting all people frustrated. might hate me for this because the fly fishing purists will say otherwise, but uh, there's a reason Bass Master Classics is all gear fishermen. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Can't catch everything with a fly. Exactly. You know, you got to know your place. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, cool. and uh, back to our lakes. I mean, you got your lake fishing, which is just exceptional. And it doesn't, you don't have to do crazy trips either. I think that's another thing too, is there's lots of lake fishing. Um, certainly, you know, within an hour, two hours, three hours, you have exponential number of local lakes. So it's not, it doesn't have to be a big production. Yeah, not you even don't, that far, really. No, you don't have to, you know, invest in a boat. Like there's lots of options that you can do locally, which I think, you know, get gets underrated a little bit because people yeah. think that you have to make some big excursion to some right. camping you know, 150-mile yeah. house. But we're really lucky to have the trophy trophy uh, lake fishing that we ha- we do have in the interior in Merritt, Kamloops, Caribou, blah, blah, blah. But a lot of people forget that there's, you know, all the local lakes in the lower mainland are also stocked with trout. And if you don't want to drive too far or you're a young kid and you don't have a car, there's a lot of lakes that you can even bus to and fish Absolutely. Right. That's They're all a, stocked with trout. That's a great, like the Freshwater Fishery Society does an unbelievable job in the lower mainland stocking those lakes. So yeah. it, it, yeah, that's, that's a great point actually. Cause people get so uppity about like going to a big trophy, but it meant you can go to like Lafarge Lake in Coquitlam. Oh yeah. Rice Lake in like North End was like green 10 minutes timbers, from my house. Green Timbers in Surrey, they throw in the odd brood stock rainbow in there. And there once go. in a while, an eight year old so, kid will pull out a 10 pound trout and you're like, you know, there's so such, cool. Yeah. You don't have to go far. <laughs> yeah. Right? No. And I think that's kind of, you know, you see all the pictures right. of all the the grand adventures, but that's you don't have to do that. Yeah, if you don't have the means to do that, there's lots of fishing nearby. If you do have the means to to drive out to the interior, we are extremely lucky with uh what the Freshwater Fishery Society of BC has done with our interior lakes and the triploid fish that they've done and and it's absolutely phenomenal. You can have some really, really incredible fishing. And that's from, yeah, you know, late, mid to late April till November. Technically, yeah, depending on your elevation. Yeah, till it freezes up. Yeah. Obviously, it's better. Um, May, June will be your ideal month, sometimes July. Middle of summer is usually your, your summer doldrums. The water's too warm, the fish go deep, and then it picks up again in the fall. Mm. Um, so September, October, sometimes November. Got it. So summertime, eh. take out in the ocean. Do yeah, fishing out ocean there. if you want. Ocean um, and everything and that we love. Oh my God, my favorite. The best months. The best months. For river trout fishing. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so there's a lot of... of not a lot. There's a few rivers that open up July 1st, like the Skagit, it's Milkmean, that are fantastic dry fly trout fisheries, and we're absolutely obsessed with them. Nice. Yeah. And the Thompson, yeah, the trout. That, yeah, I think that actually opens earlier. Yeah, so that, it opens but, early, oh, but uh, the the Chilliwack, so then the better opens again yeah. July 1st, and you can target Chinook in there if you are. And trout. So mm-hmm. apt, and yeah. trout as well. But the summertime, I mean, in British Columbia, especially in the lower mainland, it is endless. So many options. Summer, you know, that June, July, August, September, October, pretty much into November, pick what you want to do. We have so much here. I think that, uh, you know, we... We like to complain a lot about how busy things are here. Um, you know, being it's attached to happen. being attached to a city of two plus million. Um, but on the other hand, it is endless. We have so much. Yeah. And I mean, we we share a passion for trout fishing a lot. That's uh, kind of where we I think fostered our friendship. I would yeah. say, you know, so the summertime is definitely just endless things that you can do you know we got saltwater fisheries out in the ocean if you if you have a boat or access to a boat as well and you can go out there and then yeah you have dry fly fishing we have some of the best dry fly fishing around 
Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people would argue that, but there's, we have some, yeah. in British Columbia, I should say, as a yeah, whole. I, I, yeah, oh yeah. British mm-hmm. Columbia as a whole, absolutely, yeah. The, I mean, there's some, the closer you get to the city, obviously, the more pressured the fish are, so you definitely have to, yeah, the fish are definitely more pickier, um, okay. more selective. Okay. Um, but the farther away you go, like we, we fished the black water this summer and any fly in your box, pick the biggest one, skate it, like everything you've ever known about dry fly fishing, throw it at the window because it doesn't matter. Those fish are so unpressured. Really? And not picky whatsoever. You know, <laughs> hundred fish in a day, no problem. And there's so many other fisheries like that in, in BC. Um, what was that one you fished by Prince George there? Regardless, doesn't matter. I don't have to name rivers, but probably have to beep it out anyway. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Beep. (laughs) River X. Um, But yeah, I'm just. We're really lucky with what we have here in BC. The rivers closer to the Lower Mainland or in the Lower Mainland are obviously, you know, a little bit trickier. But the other thing we have this year, 2021. Oh yeah. Thanks. I love it when the pigs come through. <laughs> Except when they bump into the boat. And That's you're not catching them? Frustrating. <laughs> Tiffany over there, Tiffany knew right where I was at. She's like, pigs. I love catching pigs. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I think I think this, this is a huge thing. And going back to what we were talking about, new anglers as well. Yeah. This is your fishery. This is, you are a new fly This is your angler. year, 2021. This is your year. Okay, <laughs> new year, new you. This Ooh. is where we're going. <laughs> But uh, this, yeah, this, especially for fly anglers, absolutely, I think, for sure. Yeah. So you're not, you're not, there's no, you're not catching tiddlers. You're catching salmon, and they are spunky as heck. And if you, uh, they put up a good fight. You know what? As a new angler, this is a fantastic resource that we have that comes in. Uh, I mean, we every get couple them, years, yeah, yeah, every, every odd year, every odd year, and they come into pretty much almost every, yeah, almost all the systems, mm-hmm. most of them. I mean, big ones would be uh, like uh, Fraser, Chilliwack, Chilliwack, it's a big Squamish, one. Chilliwack, Harrison. Squamish, yeah. yeah, they all, you know, they all Hopefully get them. Hopefully they let us fish for them. Yeah, yeah last time we Knock were a little out of the Yeah, uh, but mm-hmm. pinks, are, pink, pinks are a great option, especially for those new anglers. Because they can Absolutely. go out and, I mean, you're not catching like a little like meat. You know, little dinker. <laughs> You're catching, you know, you know, a salmon that's gonna be anywhere from, you know, three to six pounds on average. You might get a bigger yeah. one than that, but you know, you can go and you can catch them and you you learn a lot. And as a fly angler, especially when you have that consistent kind of rate where you're interacting with fish, you know, it, it really helps you as an angler. So that's depending Depending Mid-July on July, yeah, certain to rivers September. like Squamish usually gets them earlier. Like how sound fisheries usually get them earlier than the Fraser. But yeah, usually it's like mid July, even early July. People start getting them off the beach, and then July through mid October. Yeah, technically, yeah, depending on where you are, for depending sure. Depending on where you are, the Fraser will get them till October, anyways, yeah. through September, and. That just overlaps all the trout fishing you have, too. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Everything's overlapping in that time. <laughs> yeah, that's, July, that, August, that's when I have September. You have people coming to the shop, and they're like, so I want to go fishing. I'm like, what do you want to do? Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> Which way do you want to go? How far and what Big do you fish, got? fish, little fish. So, yeah, Red summer's, fish, summer's fish. great. And that's not, you know, we're not even counting the, like you kind of touched on before, the crabbing that you have available to you. Yeah. The saltwater fishery that sits right out in front of our city. Oh, so lucky. You know, so, so lucky. So lucky. <laughs> you know, yeah. people are like, what do I do? I don't know what to do this weekend. I'm like, you know, we got so do much. Do not know what to do because there's too many options. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too many things. <laughs> yeah. And then we, I guess we would shift into the fall and then, pff, and you got salmon. Yeah. Salmon. For days. Coho. Coho, Chinook, Chum, where viable. Yeah. Coho starts in September in the phrase, in the. South Fraser systems anyway, like the Vetter will get them early, uh, early September through mid-November almost. Um, Squamish gets them in October, November. Mm. Chum will start showing up in October, November. Yeah, it's just a roller coaster of back options. In, back into winter springs. Yeah, there you go. There, there you yeah. go. 
And then you also, there's all trout in like oh, in the pretty fall. much yeah. in the fall too. I mean, they'll follow those salmon up as well. So there's lots of trout opportunities as well that go right through till Christmas time. Absolutely. And through really? now salmon as well. Eggs? Yeah. Absolutely. There, that's another thing too that people October get on really when the salmon show up. Yeah. All yeah. the, you know, egg fishing and stuff. So there's, there's, you know, that, that's always kind of there, you know, and people forget about that. We get so stuck. In, and then just like you said too, you know, October you can go lake fishing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Totally. It can be super good, but that just kind of gets thrown out the window. Uh, yeah, as soon yeah, as yeah. July comes around, oh, for I mean, for, for us living in the Lower Mainland anyway, I'm sure the guys in, up in Kamloops are yeah, like, excited. what are you talking about? <laughs> we fish lakes all the way till it freezes up, and then we fish the hard water. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, ice fishing, which, you know, we don't get a lot of down here, but that's definitely an option. A lot of people oh, do that. I'm dying to go ice fishing this year. I don't know why. Something about it. It's pretty fun. I've never had too much success ice fishing. I would dig a bunch oh, of holes. Either. I would put up flags. I would. Drank a lot of rum. I did drink a lot of rum. Yeah. This is true. It's pretty fun. <laughs> That's the thing. You just drink and stare at a hole in the water. Yeah. Or the ice. <laughs> it's, it's pretty fun. I did go to Tunkwa last year. Oh, yeah. And it was, it, it got pretty addicting. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And you have like the little, um, when you have your fish finder too, it's oh, pretty yeah. much like you a. You guys had a video like, game going on It was on a there. video game. 100% <laughs> a video game happening live video game. Yeah. And, uh, the, you know. Huge shout out to Tunkwa Lake Resort oh, for that. And uh, I was, we were supposed to go Bob this there year. I'm so sad. At Tunkwa, like pretty much like helped me with that. And it is unreal. Very when cool. you get somebody that is like dialed into ice yeah. fishing <laughs> and he like mentors you, I was like, this is the funnest thing oh, ever. We did a trip, a family trip up to Mile High Resort last winter. Mind you, the fish aren't big, but it's so much so fun. fun. It is fun. Yeah. It's so fun. <laughs> Especially when it's not, like, mind you, we didn't have a big, like, ice fishing tent. Um, we were just in lawn chairs on the on the lake, but, man, it's so much fun. I could see if you had a tent and yeah. a stove. So my dad. <laughs> you'd be hard pressed to get me off that. My dad, we did that one trip. He bought himself a huge <laughs> 10 person ice fishing tent this year nice. so we can go. But thanks to COVID, everything's thanks, COVID. closed. So until next time, I guess. Yeah. But so we're set for next time. Oh. There, there's, I don't think you could say, unless it rains torrentially, which can happen in January. Yep. And we're in Vancouver. So disclaimer. Um, but honestly, un- unless there's some apocalyptic event, you can do something every single day in the lower mainland. And even even when there's those crazy rains, there are a couple systems there's with dams on you them can do. that are still very fishable with we, that yeah. amount of rain. We are so lucky here. Yeah. There is never a day when there's not something that you could do. Absolutely. So so with the rain though, that sort of blows out the river or is just unpleasant to fish? No, it, it blows out. Yeah. yeah. It, like we're supposed to get what, 80 mils tomorrow. Mm. That'll blow out the okay. river. It'll be brown. It'll be too high. Eh. So go duck hunting. Go duck hunting. Okay. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe, maybe, or, you know, it's January. You could go up the mountain or something like that yeah. too. But th- however, if you were really, really, really keen on it, there would be things that There's you could some go options. to do tomorrow. Yeah. You know, you might have to work a little bit harder and it might not be productive as other opportunities, but you could fish 365 here and never do the same thing twice. And the other thing with, with, you know, when the river does blow out that people don't really think about, those fish are still there. Mm-hmm. They don't just all wash away into the ocean because the river came <laughs> right. up. Right. <laughs> it's just got to do with visibility, They're right? still there. And you know what What they do is they'll just tuck into, you know, really close to shore hmm. and they'll go up the inside. So so work the inside. Work the inside. Maybe use a bigger presentation. There's still options. It's definitely not as productive, but there's still options. And those, those rivers with dams, they definitely you know, hold the water back, as one would say. Sure. <laughs> You're not going to catch anything sitting at home on the couch. <laughs> exactly. So. You're definitely not going to catch anything on the couch. Yeah. Practice your It's cast. a long cast from the <laughs> couch. <laughs> I like that. You've used that before. That's, uh, <laughs> that's not mine. I'll have to give a shout out for <laughs> to Tim. I snatched that one from you. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So we've got an idea of a calendar of what we're looking for. Basically, there's something everywhere all the time, if we're willing to work for it, Yeah. Uh, but a new person getting into it. So there's uh, a couple things that I'm sure you guys probably hear a lot, like what gear do I need? And then I guess the other one would be, 
man, those regulations, they're oh tougher to God. read than the, than the hunting regulations. <laughs> yeah. And they change and they change on a regular basis and you got to be able to keep up with the, uh, the ongoing changes. And am I in freshwater or saltwater or am I, is, is it permissible at this area now or not? Like, is, are those common questions that you uh, guys get? Yeah, big time. They okay. definitely don't try to make it easy on you as far as regulations go. What's up with that? <laughs> no. We want to catch you. You definitely, and I guess too, uh, <laughs> you guys from the hunting side as well. I mean, y- you, you almost need a law degree. To read some of that yeah. stuff. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I, I do think that there's a bit of gray area that's <laughs> intentionally put in there. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I just, I think that it, there's a lot of instances where it could have been written a lot clearer, and that comes from both uh, the federal and the provincial side as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is, it is hard. And I can see, you know, people get intimidated when they come in the shop. They're, right. like, they're like, what can I do? And you're like, I get it. I, I know why you're confused. Believe me, I, <laughs> I sit there and I try and decipher half the stuff half the time. So right. it, it can be challenging. So for hunting, there's uh, Mark Standards. He made an app. He's uh, did a podcast with him before called iHunter. And it's got the synopsis in an app form, but it also has like pictures of the animals and it tells you hmm. geolocate where you are and what, what you can and can't hunt at that time. Is there anything like that for fishing? There is actually. Ah. There is a new, um, uh, the BCWF, I believe it's on my phone. Oh. I can grab it. They had one that just came out as well. That is an app that's similar to that as well. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, I, w- I would urge people though, like you got to know. You still have to do your due diligence. Right. And Learn stuff how to like read that. it. Yeah. Absolutely. And don't go fishing without, you know, don't go fish a new area without checking the regulations. I feel like a lot of people yeah. do that. They just assume. Yeah. Um, I think, I think an app, I, I, I agree with the app. I think mm-hmm. the app is a great resource. resource. Resource, but you never rely on it. But, but in the yeah. same breath, you read the synopsis, it says, this is a resource and it's not the law. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. It, I, yeah. I feel Whoa, like we I have to be. That aware of, you know, you can't, you can't use the be like, oh, the app said. Right. Well, totally not. Yeah. That doesn't work. <laughs> I've heard that before. But if you work. can cross check it to say, okay, <laughs> I got it. It says yeah. it's open. Let me take a look at the synopsis. Yeah, it looks good. And, and I should put a caveat on that one. For the hunting synopsis anyways, it says this isn't law. This is mm-hmm. to be used as a reference. Yeah. It's a synop. The word synopsis means condensed version of. And the same thing I would think applies to the fishing synopsis because it's all based on something else. So I would think that too, but then how do they charge you on the Wildlife Act then? Uh, under, I, it wouldn't be under the synopsis, but it would be under the Wildlife Act. The Wildlife Act would be synopsisized See, in the all, synopsis. All, already we're in the gray area. <laughs> that all took right. all of Boop. two sentences right. to get into the gray area. <laughs> Let's we back out of this one. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I mean, as a in short, the synop- fishing synopsis isn't. It's not that ridiculous to read the freshwater one anyway. For sure, for freshwater trout and steelhead and whatnot. For sure, don't the, get me started on DFO. The, yeah, yeah, like the 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 province. We talked does about this earlier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the the annoying part, uh, as somebody who works in a shop anyway, is that salmon regulations aren't printed out they're on on a website right so they're two s- totally different regulations right and a lot of people don't know how to find them um or don't know where to look mm-hmm. so trout and steelhead everything managed provincially is printed out in the synopsis and you get a paper copy and that um, does get easier it, it, it is easier so based on which region you're you're in Every, you know, there's chapters based on the regions. You look at the front page of that region and it'll give you the general regulations. And if you're going to a specific river or lake, you look you look them up in those. There's a basically a huge list of all the different exceptions. Right. So it'll be, you know, let's say Rice Lake. I'm going to Rice Lake tomorrow. Look up Rice Lake. It'll If it says something, if it says, you know, no motors allowed, no bait allowed, blah, blah, blah then those are the rules for that lake. Easy. If you don't see Rice Lake in the list, then you just refer back to the general regulations in that region. Yeah, that makes sense. Salmon regulations are on the, you know, a whole other thing and they get updated pretty frequently in season. Um, right. So it's definitely a lot harder for people to follow along with that one. 
And especially, well, I mean, the Fraser River, we're talking about that, but that's going to be tidal water up until what, Mission. the bridge? Yeah. 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 I think, I think, yeah, that's, that's probably actually one thing that um, gets asked a lot. I mean, we have provincial regulations, which apply to our, all our freshwater systems. And then we also have salmon, which transcend both freshwater and yeah. saltwater systems. So they're managed by saltwater. Right. Or by, sorry, by the federal, federal government. Federal government. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when they enter into a freshwater system, the freshwater um, system regulations still apply, but they're still managed by the provincial government. So right. for instance, in the summertime on the Capilano, you cannot use bait after August 1st. Okay. Okay. That's a provincial regulation. Okay. But if you're fishing for coho in the summertime then in you August, you cannot use bait, which right. is a provincial regulation, but you can only keep, you know, X number of coho in there. So mm. you have to constantly be looking Checking. at two different yeah. regulations at the same time, which is... Not all the time, I will say, clearly explain that that's how it works. I'd agree. Yeah. So they I'd, had some confusing ones this season too. Yeah. So, you know, that year. can definitely, that's another thing that's a bit of an inhibitor, especially to a new angler coming. They're like, so what do I read? I'm like, well, you actually have to read both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're like, what? But I'm fishing in the, you know, the, the, the river and I'm looking at a DFO. I'm like, yeah, but you're fishing for salmon. You know, so it, right. it, it that can be a bit of, I think, a, a a hurdle for new anglers as well, is that, you know, we're fortunate because we have all these, you know, anadromous species and we have these, you know, two regulatory bodies. But then on the other hand, it's like, whoa, 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 well, now I have twice as many rules. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you got to make sure you're following both of them. Yeah. And, you're yeah. Not... and be able to identify the fish too. Yeah. Right. At, at what stage one. in their spawning yeah. sequence. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, one thing I will say, if you are confused about regulations, just call your local shop or go into your local shop. Don't just go fishing thinking that you got it all figured out based on one of the regulations that you read or somebody said something, blah, blah, blah. Your buddy said that this is okay. Just just ask. You know, the guys at the shop will know. And they're used to it. You guys they're get it all the time, it. We right? We get those questions you know, every day, all day. I think that's actually a really good point because I that kind of segues into our, like the whole premise of our women's group is just ask the just question. Just ask. Mm-hmm. You okay. know what? I've had phone calls at the shop where it's like, hey, um, 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 and you can hear the river in the background. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, can, you, can you keep this fish here? And you're like, uh, no, it's closed. It's like, okay, click. <laughs> and you're like, dead. <laughs> what did yep. you kill? Something is on the beach that's not supposed to be. But, you know, if you're not sure, just like Kat said, just ask. Phone a shop. A shop is never going to say anything to you. And I, I'm sorry if you've had a we don't bad bite. experience with that. But the shops won't bite. Like, we're here to be that. Literally, our job is to read those regulations and understand those regulations. Right. So we sit there and when a new notice comes out or something, you have to sit there and it's, you know, terrible to sit there and read through all of that, but that's our job. And so phone your shop and be like, Hey, I'm a little confused on this. What's the perception here? And then go from there. That's, that's why the shops are there. That's why we have small businesses that are there to read those rules. Exactly. And to understand them. So tell me about the BC women's fly fishing group. (laughs) <laughs> Just one day you woke up. Oh, sorry. I, I was waiting until you took a drink. <laughs> yeah. How did it start really? So maybe we'll start with how how think, Jill and I started fishing together, I guess. Yeah. Because that's where the conversation how came up. Because I, I remember the conversation we Me had, too. And it was really. It was fun. Do you want it? Okay. Yeah, let's hear it. I'll go. Okay. Okay. So essentially what happened is back in the day, so my ex-boyfriend and her boyfriend are best friends. Okay. Okay. And so they would guide up in Haida Gwaii and they'd be gone all summer because that's what guides do. Bless them. But, you know, they'd be gone all summer. So, you know, from mid to late June, right in through till early August. like season. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know like okay bye love you have a good time you know you know we respect they do what they love we respect yeah. that we understand it sure you do you so then you're left kind of all summer so that being said they started they're still best friends and you know they um kind of had that and they go away so i think actually when it started because i've known dimitri longer her boyfriend longer than i've known you yeah, actually. And Demetri said like, hey, you know, you should get in touch with Catherine. Like she really likes trout fishing. I was like, oh, okay. That sounds cool. So I have I, to say one thing too. Our boyfriends don't like trout fishing. Yeah, the They're a nuisance. Disclaimer. If it's ah. not a steelhead, a Chinook or a sturgeon, 
Who cares? Yeah. So anyway, that was what. So it that was never appreciated. Started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then I said, I think, I think we we went, uh, f- we went fish the Thompson for trout. I think for the first time, that and was kind of our thing. Got stolen. Yeah. But what? anyways, that's a different story. <laughs> but anyways, um, adventures. Yeah. So we kind of it kind of grew from there, and we kind of got connected through them, and it came to be that we had this shared passion for trout fishing which we couldn't necessarily um have with them have exactly. with them because you know it was not into it no, no. and they, they are they're both very, very extremely good anglers like well for sure they just tier. don't care about trout they just don't care it doesn't go the Actually, other way yeah. dimitri likes lake fishing yeah disclaimer only yeah. chronomids though <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as soon true. as the chronomids <laughs> go away and damselflies and mayfly nymphs come out uh, no. But yeah, so we hung out and then we started to develop that we had this like really great shared passion for trout fishing specifically, which has obviously expanded into more, but it kind of started there. And we're like, oh, this is great. Like they're gone. We both are in the same situation. You know, they're gone. It's we have perfect. each other. We can hang out. Yeah. It's perfect. Totally. totally. And so and we go trout fishing. And the vibe with, with another female angler is so different than with a, I don't know, it's, I don't want mean to different. be sexist, but yes, it's so much fun. It's not competitive. It's, you know, you know, you're, you're, yeah, it's just, our we're conversations sa- we're on the same are different level. in the car. Conversations it's are not so like, much fun. It's not like, I missed that fish like four hours ago and I'm like really pissed about it. No, it's not. <laughs> although, that does, <laughs> although it does happen, but you know, it'll be still like girl yeah. talk. It'll, yeah. you know, so it, it's still fun that way. So we kind of went and it just like instantly clicked. Somebody gets a big fish and there's like crazy screams And going we're like on. so pumped for each other. And yeah. it's not like I'm going to be like pouting. No. Not to say that all boys pout, but I've been in situations <laughs> where I fish with, <laughs> there's with guys. There's never been what? a pouty session with us. No. No pouts. But to be like disclaimer, I fish with oh, other yeah. guys and it's like 20 minutes of pouting because I got one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm That's just going to say it, okay? This Absolutely. comes from <laughs> factual <laughs> observations that I've had. <laughs> yeah. Right? And so we'd go, and it was just fun, and it was different. And so we're like, much fun. We're like, oh, my God. Like, I wish that everybody could, all, Experience like, of our female that. anglers yeah. could have this. Like, we're so lucky that we had the kind of that, um, that relationship built, you right. know, from them. But we were just so excited about that and it yeah. was cool and then we've you know that's grown since and that was that was a while ago now how long ago was that um five years mm-hmm. almost at least almost Maybe five years this summer i guess because dimitri and I, it was the first summer dimitri and i were together i think yeah, so right like right that. away you guys decided hey we click this is awesome so let's, let's get others into this well, or did no, it take a while? that took a while. That took a while. I think I brought the idea up with you one day when we were driving back from the river. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, yeah, and then you said it, and I was like, hey, I was, I was thinking the same yeah. thing because it was weird, and we just had this kind of, we were kind of on the same page of that, and it, it's funny because we always talk about being on the same page, but w- yeah, you just you're like, hey, I was kind of thinking that. You know, and and with the two shops, yeah, I we mean, have both our shops. There's right? more and more sure. ladies coming into the shops. We just wanted to create this little like, we kind of wanted to community. recreate for other people, kind of what what we yeah. felt. And and there's there's a lot of women's groups, women's fly fishing groups in the states, mm. and I feel like Canada's really behind on that. Mm. So yeah, we just wanted to. Try yeah. it out and start one there's, here. There's tons in the States. So how many Women's people clubs. belong to the fly fishing group? In so what, it's Facebook two page? and a half years old now. Okay. And we've got over 650 now. Yeah. 650? That's Just on our Facebook BC, group. BC, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah, I think the Facebook groups, I checked the other day, it was like 640, mm-hmm. although a bunch of people joined the other night after your... Yeah, it, your, uh, it's, it's grown quite a lot. And I think to... It's just kind of having that access. I mean, Facebook, I think, is a great forum for you can participate as much or as little as you want, mm-hmm. but it's still it's still right there for you. Um, and it's free and it's easy to join, easy to find. We have a base. I'll explain it. We have a, a closed group page on our on Facebook, BC Women's Fly Fishing Group. If you want to look it up, feel free. But it's closed. Right. So you have to ask to join. So we kind of weed out all the fake accounts or mm. guys but there's definitely been some guys trying to join find them? <laughs> yeah oh yeah <laughs> wow but we just want to have like a safe place for for women to ask questions and you know i'm going fishing this weekend anybody want to come along and we just don't want to have any creeps on there mm. <laughs> if you know what i mean there's, there's no like snarkiness or yeah, meanness no. or anything i i 
I won't name the names of the groups on Facebook, but there's there's a few different groups on Facebook for hunting and fishing, and there there <laughs> there's just so much attitude, and yeah. and you get you get ego, yeah, totally. Yeah. If you don't know what you're doing, you get ego. If you ask, like heaven forbid, you're one of these guys that's new to hunting and says, "Hey, I'm going up to Region Eight. Uh, you know, where's a good spot to get whatever? You you can't ask that. Your group." It's, it's just, it's, it's a given. If you have a question, just ask it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, that's so Everyone's important. so polite and nice and encouraging. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I don't know what it is. I, I, I think that comes from, say, we've kind of fostered that because mm-hmm. it, it be, because we come from the shop. We know that those, those questions are out there. Don't be scared mm-hmm. to ask that question, but we also want the space to be there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, people to feel comfortable asking those questions. It's easy. It should be easy. And when you do ask those questions, you know you're going to get legit responses. So you've got the Facebook group. Yeah. But you guys also do Zoom calls. Jill started that uh, basically with COVID. Yes. Because we used to do a couple years ago. Yeah, I know. It's so sad. (laughs) We used to do like fly tying nights every month almost at the shop in person. (laughs) We did some like... Uh, big seminars at Cabela's with, you know, some special speakers, yeah, we had, everything in person. We had some like introduction to fly fishing courses in person, but with COVID, we haven't been able to meet up in groups. Mind you, it's kind of a good and bad thing because, it, be, you know, doing the stuff in person, you know, it is a BC women's fly fishing group. So there's people from all over the province, the Kootenays, mm-hmm. Prince George, Smithers, blah, blah, you name it. So having those in, in-person in courses, you know, only select Pretty people. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's, I mean, mind you, we have a great group of ladies in the Lower Mainland that, that are super active in the group and, and love coming to our courses and that. But it, the Zoom courses definitely opened up to, to having those other women um, able to join, which was really cool, I find. So do yeah. they have to pay to join? No, free. All free. Yeah. You know, I thought about, and this is actually interesting because on um, Saturday night we did that Zoom call Mm -hmm. and uh, I was talking to uh, Sarah Simpson who has the Western Outdoors Women Facebook group too and she, they're in um, Salmon Arm. Okay. And she does it. And I was, I was talking to her and we were just kind of conversing on a couple things too and she was under kind of the same thought and you know, we've talked about it because people say, oh, you know, you, maybe you should charge and stuff. Membership now. fees. Um, yeah. You know, we will charge like if we do a casting lesson or yeah. something like Not that. Not everything is free. Yeah. Or a sure. um, like our in-person fly tying nights where materials were required and stuff. There was a charge just to cover yeah. the materials essentially. And but it's super sense. affordable. For yeah. sure. Totally. But the, the Zoom calls and stuff, I think we did still want it to be on a format where it was it was accessible to everyone. Because even if it's a... If there's a charge on a membership, Mm -hmm. it still puts a bit of a border Mm. to some people. Sure. The fundamental thing is it's supposed to be a safe space. They can ask questions and there's there's no judgment. You know, there should not be judgment. And this also comes from us both working in shops. Mm. I've been a girl, you know. How long have you been a girl for? (laughs) <laughs> a long time. <laughs> Most of your Since life. The <laughs> Pretty much my entire life. <laughs> but anyways, but I've been a girl that works in the shop for, you know, 15 years. I I get it. Like, oh, I've, yeah. you know, I... I Talk my, about judgment. My dad owns the shop. I've worked there since I was 15. Without doing the math, that's like 16 years for me. But, <laughs> you know, I, I've had people that have walked in and have refused to talk to me. Same. Really? And yeah. you know what? Like, okay, still sure, happens. Whatever. But you know what? Like, I this is this is not a this is not a side job for me. This is my job. This is this Catherine's is your life. Full time job. Right. This is not a side mm-hmm. hobby for us. Totally. I do this. I spend hours out on the water. You know, so don't walk in and talk to the 14 year old kid that works at my shop that's because the he's a male ever. Yeah. that's been fishing for a year and a half. <laughs> Oh, like, you know what? If they want on. to, go ahead. Yeah, no problem. Go ahead. See you. Know, I when he to... can't answer your question and turns to me, right. I will gladly help you. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's not about being a, a female or not, but it just you know, it still annoys me that you still get that. So I don't want anyone to feel like that because I get yeah. felt like that, you know, on the daily. She gets felt like mm-hmm. that on the daily. So I don't want people. I want you to come in. And I want you to come into our group and ask a question and feel confident asking that question. Nice. Yeah. I like it. That's accessibility. 
Yes. Yeah. And you said something earlier that you touched on, which is really interesting. I think it ties into this, but you brought up the word mentorship. And you said, you know, if you go out there, you've got a good mentor to show you, show you the ropes. So many people don't have that. Yeah. So another thing, I guess we didn't really talk, chat about, but we do a lot of where we try to do a lot of trips, day mm. trips, and we do our best to have either Jill and I, or both of us there. So the, the cool thing about that is like, we have a lot of women in the group that, you know, they might not fish unless they mm. come on one of our trips and they, they come on those trips because they feel comfortable going on a guided trip. The guide, yes, is a male, but one of us, you know, they know either Jill or mm. I through the shop or through the group and they feel comfortable going with a group of, of, of strangers essentially because they know one of us. Mm. Whereas, you know, it is intimidating booking a trip, not knowing a single person going on that trip. I mean, you came on oh, one Jill. of our trips this this fall. You didn't know anybody. Mind you, Jill and I weren't there on those ones, unfortunately. But I did know the guide, though. You did know the yeah. guide, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pat was one yeah. of your guides yeah, at yeah. Skeena Space. Yeah. So it was less intimidating. It is less yeah. intimidating when you know at least one of the people, and right? I never... I never would have thought, hey, Trev, I'm going to spend Sunday up in Squamish. I'm going to go bunch fishing. Of strangers. I'm going to hire a guide and go out <laughs> fishing for whatever, right? Like it just, I would never have done it. But yeah. you guys coordinated the whole thing and it was amazing. It was like one of the best days of the year. It was Sweet. so much fun. And I didn't, like like you said, I didn't know anyone. Yeah. It was, it was just awesome. Awesome. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. We have just as much fun. Like... <laughs> I love our women's group trips. Honestly, it's, they're so much fun. I look forward to those more than anything. We do, we try to do a decent amount. I mean, we usually do a few uh, in the spring up the Lillooet with Curtis. And those are my favorite. Oh my God. We Wait. book two boats and it's just, it's like 10 ladies in jet boats going up the, the mm. you know, across <laughs> Harrison Lake up the Lillooet catching trout left, right, and center, and it's so much fun. We, it, it has just been, it, it has just been, like, the best, like, two years. It's of- so much fun, and the cool thing is, like, we're making tons of friends from it, and I feel like a fishing buddy matchmaker a lot of the time. Yes. because uh, <laughs> it's so much fun. Buddy match. The friends that come out of it, like, there's people in our group that are, like, best friends now because of this group. It's and they, so cool. And they've and they and found they go somebody fishing themselves. It's amazing. I, I, I love it. I, I love it. It it yeah. makes me so, like that's probably like the best part yeah. of it is when you see people and they're like, oh, we went fishing the other day, and you're like, so we've, cool. We've done our job. <laughs> nice. But I I think too like you know I sometimes I I feel like you know both of our families grew up fishing and stuff so we that was always available to us not everybody has that no. right not everybody has a dad or a family or a mom or a boyfriend or a husband absolutely or you know a grandparent that got them into fishing some people just generally want to get into it but mm. i couldn't imagine trying to jump in nowadays It'd oh be my scary gosh. as heck yeah. right so i gotta ask for yeah. the other 50 percent of our <laughs> listeners do you guys have a counterpart oh I mean, there's certain clubs in the Lower Mainland, guy. You know, there's what the Totems, the Ospreys, yeah, North Shore Fishing Game Club. There's yeah. different mm-hmm. game there's clubs out there for sure. A lot of them are they're not as easy to join. You got to be whatever certain level. I don't know. I find guys aren't as open to to having random strangers join. I don't know. It's not the same. I find they're not as encouraging, and I don't want to. That's why bash. you started your group. Yeah. It's, it's it's different when you're a different. woman. That's such an odd. It, co- I, feel I, like I know it's, it's hard. hard. I like, feel so mean. That's a great that, question but. because I I'm trying to like think of an example and there's not really something that parallels. Because there's I mean, a there's, lot of guys out yeah. there that'll that'll want to learn in the exact same way. It's it's a lot more competitive. Sure, with guys. Not all. Yeah, not, not all. all. And there's not a ton all. out there that just yeah. they want to learn in the same fashion. But absolutely. T- so one thing we have like kind of thought about is to do more like co-ed trips or couples trips. So that might be something down the road, but hmm. it would be cool to have a a, a similar guys group. Yeah, I mean, I, there's a few out there. There's I, like Stillwaters, that Facebook page. That hmm. thing's great. Yeah, no, the, I think I think but there is. It might not yeah. be as like pronounced, and mm-hmm. it might not be as defined as an individual group, but I I think there is. 
Yeah. But is that maybe, the, st- when you say still waters, that's not the still no, water not sports? No, not the shop. Yeah. Okay. There's like a, a Facebook page. It's, it's super, they're super friendly on there. Any okay. questions you have about lake fishing. Yeah. There you go, um, guys. Brent Gill, I think, is the one that runs it. Yep. Um, anyway, great, great group. But it's, it's, it's super open. It's co-ed. It's not just guys, right. obviously. Sure. But um, there's, I think, like thousands of guys on there now. There's a lot, it's a big group. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think actually, um, just to go into that, because you kind of touched on it a little bit, is is we talk about like new anglers too. I mm-hmm. think I, I I feel a little bit as a disclaimer. I have to say this, and we get we get really really caught up nowadays in um, the media and portraying yourself as being good. And I think something that we've always talked about in the group as well is it's okay to be new. It's okay. It's okay it's so to be new. okay. It's not even funny. <laughs> it's okay to suck. <laughs> it's okay to suck. That's how you learn. I sucked so bad today on the river. It's Honestly, not even though, funny. like we, that is so important because everybody now, and it, it's it's just the climate that we live in. Okay, social media. It's it's in your face all mm. the time. It's well, everyone o- rocks on social media. Of course, everyone's a rock live star, your best yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But but it, it's okay to be new. And I think that's really important to talk about because you, you get a lot of people and they get so wound up about mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh, I have to be able to prove to everybody that I'm good. We have to, we have to remember to learn the process, to love the process of learning again. I like that. Because that's the cool thing about fishing. You're constantly you learning. You never know everything. And I'm sure it's the same with hunting. I mean, I don't dive into the hunting world, but I'm sure it's the same with hunting. Right? Always. You, you don't know everything. And we have to remember to learn to love that process of Absolutely. learning. Absolutely. And it's fun. And it's okay. You know what? If you went out and you didn't get anything today. Oh, my gosh. That's fine. It's fine. It's so fine. Um, that's what I love about fly fishing is because... I very rarely catch <laughs> anything. <laughs> so it's really taught me to be like, chill out on yeah. the expectations of success. And I don't need to bring, especially catch and release. It's like, I'm not bringing home any fish meat at all It doesn't even all matter. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to go, I'm going to practice my cast and it's going to be calm. It's it's like, it's the most relaxing meditative experience I've ever had in my life. Exactly. I am completely addicted to it. <laughs> I, I just, I love it so much. And it's so against everything that I've ever been like super excited about because I suck at it and I, I very rarely catch it rarely catch anything but when I do it's just it's awesome it's but it's not yeah, yeah but it's not like why I'm out there doing no it. but you also mm-hmm. know that feeling when you make a really nice looking cast oh it's the best right I love so it so you have to learn to love that process and that's what it's about yeah. it's not about like you know getting that picture so that you can post it so that you can be like look how many likes mm-hmm. I got it's like <laughs> hey look I made this really great cast and I feel really good about myself mm-hmm. today because I laid out a 70 foot cast and I feel great plus most of my friends wouldn't care if they saw an awesome <laughs> cast I did either. Like, no, but, okay. but I, I think that's where we have to totally. shift that importance to. And I, I, it doesn't matter if it's angling or fly fishing or whatever. It's like we have to shift that. And so talking just to, you know, the new, the 100% group, mm-hmm. not just the 50%, yeah. talking to the 100% group, like let's talk about learning. And I think that's what in the group especially we try and like ask questions. Please mm-hmm. ask questions. Mm-hmm. We or whoever else here is expert, because there's certainly lots of other girls in our group that are very experienced as well. Like, let other people help you. And like, yeah. it's okay. I have lots of questions. I don't know anything about hunting. But, you know, if I'm going to get into it, I'm going to go ask somebody that knows. And I don't it's, care. It's hard to learn if you think you already know everything. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, think, I think that's like the biggest thing about this group yeah. is that there is n- no, like you guys don't act like you know everything. I'm not not saying that that you act like you don't know anything, but <laughs> not not at all. Like I'm always amazed at how much I'm like, oh my God, like I can't believe how much there is to know and how much you guys do know, but you don't act like you know everything. Whereas I find sometimes dealing with other shops or, or mm-hmm. people or not to say guys in general, but um, just other people, there is the, like you have to have an answer and you guys don't act like that. And the group's not about always having an answer. I mean- yeah. Do, it's okay to say I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But right. I can look into it and find out later. Yeah. That's an there that's you go. absolutely another thing. If I don't know, I'm gonna be like, I don't know. Let me let me <laughs> let me figure out the answer for you. I right. might have to get back to you, but I'll figure and out an the answer. The cool thing about the group too is there's so many amazing women on there. If I don't 100%. know the answer, if it's some crazy like have to be entomology thing or fish ID thing, there's 
amazing biologists par- that that work for DFO that are part of the group, and you're like, oh, wow. well, Katie can answer, or so and so can answer, or you know, maybe she knows. I don't know everything. Actually, I just asked Katie today if she would do a presentation oh, cool. again on. She's a. She just got her um her master's degree last year, so. We're gonna get. There's her a few. Too. There's quite a few biologists actually in the. In yeah. The group. So, so this is gonna be an upcoming possible <laughs> Zoom presentation. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I she did one in the Katie, spring. Katie, you're committed. Yeah. Sorry, Katie. <laughs> you're in. <laughs> I did talk to her today, so she knows it's coming. But <laughs> sweet. Um, but yeah. So you know, we try. We try and do that. But yeah, I. The, we we know we certainly don't know everything, but we just want to be able to facilitate. Yeah. Some answers, whether it comes from you know elsewhere, that's fine. Doesn't Absolutely. Have to be us. Yeah. Well, is there anything else that we should be talking? about because I'm looking at the time here and I think best practices for a podcast and they say I, we've gone over it, but that's okay. <laughs> this is very interesting. Is there anything else we should be talking about? Mm. We've got to get some plugs in for your shops. Any specials coming up? Ooh. Uh, well, put you on the spot. Boxing day is over. So don't we, we don't really have Valentine's day sales. <laughs> <laughs> Come, no, 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 oh, no, God, we could, no. we could, you could say, you could say, should. you could say you got your, your lady angler in your life that really oh, wants to yes. get into uh, fly fishing or gear fishing, depending <laughs> where you're at, you know, go and buy, go and buy them a rod. They're you know really what your lady really wants? Yeah. She's, fly rod. She says she wants flowers, but I guarantee you she really <laughs> wants that new fly rod. So or better get able it. Reel. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> no, Who I think jewelry on their fingers when they can have jewelry on their rods. Absolutely. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just we need to be more positive and we just need to all be more supportive of you, whether you're a guy, girl, however you go. Like, just let's let's keep it positive. Yeah. I like it. Thank you very much for taking the time to come and speak on the Silver Core podcast. I have a funny feeling there might be follow up podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is really out. fun. This has so. been so much fun. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Tonight I'm joined by Catherine Laflemme. Did I say that right? No, you didn't. He's like, La Flemme. <laughs> <laughs> See? I, I, look at, I don't know why you've been saying it like that. And I was like, Damn it. it's not, you're saying it like it's Flemme. <laughs> La Flamme. La <laughs> Sorry. So we'll try this one again. <laughs> and we met through our mutual friend, April Vokey of Anchored Outdoors. Welcome, Kat. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's quite all right. Not a problem. still laughing about the flam. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm serious. No problem. <laughs> you know, and uh, I'll... Oh. Go it's on. okay. You don't need those. <laughs> <laughs> Your head's too small. I have a really small head and I have really small ears. <laughs> <laughs>